Hello again, everyone. I'm sitting in a Citation Encore tonight. I'm gonna be showing you the Emer bus in a Citation Encore. I've done a video about the Emer bus in uh, other 500 series Citations, but the Encore has a couple of, uh, of uh, added features to the Emer bus and uh, some really uh, nice upgrades in redundancy and safety. So uh, I wanna point out those differences tonight. Um, to start with, I'm gonna turn the Emer bus on and I'll just point out everything that we have on the Emer bus here. If you want a little more detailed explanation of uh, items on the Emer bus, you can also watch my videos in the uh, other 500 series citations. Uh, but uh, basically here in the Encore, uh, when we turn on the Emer bus to check it, we can see that there's 24 volts on the voltmeter. That's the battery voltage that we're reading. Uh, we can come down here and the Standby uh, pedostatic system is the is connected, or I should say this: the uh, standby pedostatic heat is connected. So when I flip the switch for the uh, pedo heat, you should see a jump in the voltmeter. Let's see if I can get it here with my left hand while I'm recording. There you go. You see a little jump, or a little twitch down, maybe is the better way to describe it. That's the pedostatic heat that we're working with there. Coming down here to the Emer lights, these are still part of the system. We can turn those up at the rheostat and see them up in the ceiling of the cockpit. Both lights are working. And uh, now some of the big differences compared to the other 500 series citations, we have COM1 and NAV1 working, as well as RMU1. That's this box right here. This is really just a display face uh, to control other boxes within the aircraft. So see how RMU1 is, uh, is working, but RMU2 over here is shut down. We have the N1 tapes and digits working. We have the COM1 NAV1 uh, standby display face working. This is in case the RMU fails, we can use this box to tune the uh, radios. And uh, we also have landing gear. This is something that is different from all the other 500 series citations where the uh, landing gear control valve and the uh, hydraulic bypass valve is wired to the Emer bus. So that means that uh, we can ex retract and extend the landing gear normally when operating on the Emer bus, um, which is very different from the earlier 500 series citations where you'd have to do a manual gear extension if you were operating on the Emer bus. Uh, there's also no indicator lights or anything, but we have the flaps. I'll just show the flaps here for a minute to emphasize that the flap control valve is also connected to the Emer bus. So um, that's a big difference that you don't get in the earlier 500 series citations. I need to circle back here for a minute to a couple of items in the same instrument. So the uh, standby HSI and DG1, directional gyro one, are combined into the same instrument here. And when I turn the Emer bus on, this is powered off right now. I'm gonna turn the Emer bus back on. You can see that is the standby HSI coming to life. So you could tune in a, an ILS or a VOR into NAV1 and it will be displayed on this display face. And the DG part portion, directional gyro one, is the heading component of this instrument. So when that uh, spins up and provides an accurate reading, that uh, proves that the, uh, the, the system is working correctly and that's shown by having the heading flag pulled. So we wait to see the heading flag pulled in order to verify that the DG1 is working correctly. There it goes. That shows it's working correctly. It takes a, a minute or two off. And the last item to talk about is uh, the audio panels. So uh, we have the uh, audio panels for audio panel one and audio panel two over here. Those are uh, connected to the Emer bus so that we can listen to audio through the overhead speaker if we need to communicate with ATC. Okay, now to circle back to some of the differences between the earlier 500 series citations and the Encore, 
operationally speaking, uh, some things to keep in mind if we need to be operating on the Emer bus after a dual generator failure um, is uh, what we have and also what we don't have and how that relates to us operationally. So uh, as I said earlier, the landing gear is gonna work fine. We can extend and retract that normally. The flaps are gonna work fine. Uh, however, the speed brakes are not gonna be accessible nor are the thrust reversers. So in the older 500 series citations, you were essentially planning on a complete hydraulic system failure uh, if you needed to switch over to the Emer bus. Whereas here, uh, you have sort of a, a partial, like a lack of access, you maybe could say, uh, where uh, you still need to plan for a, um, not using the TRs and not having speed brakes available on landing. Although you will have a, a normal flap setting. Um, However, when it comes to the uh, brake system, an important uh, lesson to be learned about the brake system here is that the uh, Encore uses a brake metering valve rather than a master cylinder uh, when it comes to applying the brakes. And what this means is that the master cylinder used in the older 500 series citations, uh, you could almost treat it like a 172. You wouldn't have anti-skid available but you could pump the brakes and even with the electrical system completely shut down, um, the, uh, the brakes would work. You just needed to pump pressure into them and the master cylinder would do that for you. Um, whereas with a brake metering valve, that uh, requires an electrical connection, uh, normal DC power. So if, uh, and that normal DC power is, is not tied to the Emer bus in this case. So uh, if you're gonna be landing using nothing but the Emer bus, um, you need to be ready to use the uh, the uh, backup brake system down here. Pull this red handle and use the nitrogen bottle to uh, apply the wheel brakes. And uh, again, of course, you're not going to have anti-skid uh, available with that. That's just going to be both brakes simultaneously with no anti-skid protection. So um, in the Encore, it's uh, definitely uh, easier to get better landing performance out of the airplane by nature of the fact that you have full flaps um, but you still need to consider that you're not going to have normal wheel brakes you're going to be using the emer or the uh, the backup brake system you're not going to have thrust reversers and you're not going to have speed brakes uh, so you're probably going to want to go to a, a relatively long runway of course follow the checklist the abnormal pr procedures uh, spell it all out um, and uh, give you some correction factors, but uh, you certainly don't want to plan to go to a, a short, wet runway. Another consideration when operating on the Emer bus by itself would be the pressurization system in the Encore. Uh, this applies basically for uh, descent and landing after switching over to the Emer bus. Uh, you need to be aware that the, the digital pressurization controller is not tied to the Emer bus. So notice here how the display is uh, completely shut down. Um, this, uh, this system is completely taken out of the loop operating on the Emer bus, and uh, therefore you would need to use the, uh, the manual cherry picker here, and uh, that would control the cabin pressure as you come in for uh, descent and landing. You would have to uh, manually adjust the cabin pressure to uh, bring it down close to the field elevation, but also ensure that you're depressurized for landing.